Hello, beautiful people. It's me, Frandonga, your number one job seeker, bringing you some undiluted hot gist this time of the day. I know you like gist, just like me. And this one you hear today, it will shock you. I promise you that one. <laughs> this is the kind of gist that will affect your health and the health of your family. Yes, yes. We are talking about our health on this podcast today. I'm not alone. We won't. There's an Ogonge health expert. Here with me. Together, we're dropping the gist on you. Wah! As the hot, Neil are the ones powering this gist. So wherever you are, at home, at work, at play, at sleep, or eyes open, call your best friend, call your family, even call your enemy. Let's get this gist together. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Now, remember that song, Jumbo, my son, I sent you to school. You don't know how to. Hmm? Hmm? You can't remember? No. It's old school. So, me now, it's me that I'm old school, Abby. So, it's me that's old school. No worry. Sure, you know this one. Ali go to school. <laughs> Ali come away. Eh, eh, yeah, yeah. So, I put it to you. My Lord, may I? May I? Just hold on. I put it to you that both Jambulo and Ali, they have one thing in common. They didn't practice their homework. They didn't do example. They didn't follow the example in textbook on the blackboard. That's why they didn't know book. You know? But this one has made me start to think now that in our bodies and in our health, when it comes to immunization and vaccination, can it be that it's the same thing that is happening that maybe immunization, it is now giving example and homework to our bodies so that when the exam of disease comes, our bodies can pass in flying colors. Eh? You know, that popular saying, they say preparation is the mother of manifestation. All right? And he will prepare to fail, has failed to nowhere. He either permanent, either failed and whatever. Just prepare your body against attack from disease. That is the cocoa. That is the main matter that we are discussing today. Prepare your body against invaders. Take immunization. In case you are saying, no be me go tell you what you go do with your body. I hear. This may not be your first time of hearing about immunization. I know. Some of you, you have been listening to things about immunization before. You have even already collected immunizations before, you know, recommended by the WHO. Maybe from childhood, you have been seeing health caregivers say, immunize your baby, immunize your baby. Wee, 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 wee. Whether as they born new baby like this, can give them immunize. Fresh baby, as they come to the world, you pop out like that. You go collect immunization. Sharp. So, right now on this show, the Umbonge expert with me is going to examine the why, the where, the why not and if not of immunization today. I'm coming. Hello, da. With Frank Donga. Hello, da. You're listening to Hello, Doc. With, with Frank Donga. Remember, I told you I have a guest with me who is the health expert. Together, we're going to be dropping this just hot, hot. That guest is no other person than Dr. Francis Oh, how you do? You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Good to see you, sir. I like your style. Uh, what's my style? Doctor, the, <laughs> doctor, to the guest style. Looky, looky. Baba just, Baba just, uh, pelengo the nah. color combination. Frank, I don't understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah. in case you are wondering, Doctor Hanido is a physician. He's a social entrepreneur. He's a poet. He's an advocate for transformative African leadership. He is currently the president of the West African Academy of Public Health. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he shock you. He has been part of the thrust in health reforms in Africa, including national health acts in Nigeria, right-based approach to health, and uh, IMNCH strategy. He has worked in the fields of infectious diseases and RMNCAH, non-communicable diseases, nutrition intro. Oh, this is it too much? It's too much. Too far, too much. Doctor, you are welcome again. Thank you, sir. Um, this issue of immunization, I want us to start from the bottom part. You know, you know the bottom part of jollof. You know, which one? Senegalese? Nigeria, no, Nigerian jollof now. Uh -uh. Don't cause while well out. <laughs> Nigeria. Everybody knows the status of Nigerian jollof now. Yeah. <laughs> so. The way bottom part of jollof used to be sweet. Mm. Let's start from the sweet part of the gist. Why is it so important? Because I know you doctors, you know, 
you talk about immunization a lot, especially when a baby is born. Why is this so important? Okay, um, it's very important. Uh, let me start by saying first that uh, one of the things, the, when you, you mention the baby, let me start with that. At birth, the child's system is not prepared for the ex external environment the way it should be able to fight diseases. So some of the diseases the body may be exposed to may be diseases the child cannot be able to overcome at that early age. The immune system is not, not fully developed. So what you can do for the child is to give it, him or her an early start, an early shot at life. I'm sure if you raise your left arm here, you probably have a BCG scar. Yeah. We used to call so, it number. Yes, BCG scar. And I I'm sure most of us here have it. So that BCG scar is mostly the one that you're giving at birth. And it leaves a scar. That scar is part of the reaction to show that it has actually been effective, that your body mounted the kind of requisite immune. And it, it prevents uh, uh, some level of TB and to some extent, some confers some advantage uh, against leprosy. So over the years, you've noticed now that uh, issues of leprosy, especially in the young, has actually re uh, reduced. So most people you see with diseases like that are people who either were not vaccinated then or people who have some immune challenge that have come down with it, like HIV AIDS and all that. So you see, these things have a role. And over 20 diseases now can be prevented by vaccination. Over 20? Over 20 of them. And we have been able to, in the world, eliminate uh, smallpox, which was a major killer disease. Just because of vaccination? Yes, yeah, just vaccination. And then more recently, Africa is polio free. You know, in the sense that we have not eliminated polio, but we have been able to stay without polio, uh, serious polio problem for a while. Wait, let's, let us understand. Some of us are not you know, deep into the medical field and they are hearing us. Africa is not polio free. No, Africa, Africa, Africa is, is polio, polio free. Yes. But we have not eradicated polio. Yes, because there are other pockets of polio around the world. Okay. Uh -huh. People like, like some like places like uh, some parts of Asia, like Pakistan, Afghanistan area. And particularly where you have humanitarian crisis and where the vaccination process has been impaired by circumstances. So you can still have pockets of people that have the infection, the children that have not been vaccinated. So they transmit to other people. So Why is this always children, children, children? You're always hammering on. Because yeah, because... A lot of their immune system is not that capacitated to be able to deal with some of these things. So a lot of times they are the ones who are the fall guys for disease. But then it's not always like that. You know, sometimes there are some diseases that children thrive better for other reasons, you know. So sometimes, but the major part of it is that we need to support their immune system as they get older, especially when they're under five years, to do better in terms of preventing diseases. So, so in essence, Vaccination is life-saving. Uh, I'll give you an example. Between 2000 and 2017, analysis done, it showed that the world was able to prevent over 21 million deaths wow. by just vaccination. Yes, globally. Between that, that, uh, that, that period of 17 years. It's amazing. But people don't often see it in that sense. And a lot of these diseases are common with people of poor economic status for obvious reason is either they are not eating well or they have issues with even going to the hospitals to be able to access some of these things they may have barriers which may be economic or maybe also environmental and other things so their children come down with these things and each time this child does not go to school it affects the child's milestones and sometimes the child may be just diarrhea it keeps the child from going to school it may from the diarrhea it could go into frank malnutrition and it can impair the child's this thing. And there's what you call the first 1,000 days of life. What the child is exposed to from at its conception, when the mother conceives the child, up to the first two years of life can detem determine how the brain function of the child. Wait, they're trying to say whatever hits a baby from pregnancy to up to yeah, two years. To, yeah, to two can years in terms of nutrition. Whether it will get sense in, or it will get sense. Yes, the quality of nutrition matters. Can, so what if we just eat good food and we don't take vaccine? Can that work? No, that's not the way because the child will still not be capacitated against certain diseases. So food and there are diseases that food alone cannot do it. Eh. Food alone, good nutrition can improve immunity, but may not confer the child total level of response required for certain diseases. 
food alone cannot give us that level. that level, yes. You are a public health expert. I'm sure you have gone through the length and breadth of Nigeria and Africa. Mm. In your experience, why do you think people don't want to take vaccine? Are they afraid? Do they have another backup somewhere? Are they baffled with Agbo or maybe they just want to... Uh, <laughs> well, let me, let me... Let I don't me. understand how... So they say collect something from child that will make you your leg work. Um, there's, a, there's, there's been a lot of studies around those things, sir, but, but uh, nobody, depending on the environment, they feel there's an agenda behind it. But the reality is that these vaccines work. So in other places, some people think uh, if their women get vaccinated for anything, when we give tetanus toxoid or their children, that they are trying to make them uh, infertile, the women infertile and all. So all sorts of but is it stories. True or is it true? It's not true. Mm. All sorts of... They say, and you'll be surprised that some educated people who... Who for, who for emotional reasons, best known to them, against all this vaccination, they come up with all sorts of stories, and most of them are not based on science. That's the problem. It's not based on evidence. One of the challenges with education in our environment is health literacy. It's a critical window. How much a community understands health, how much the individual understands health matters. That affects their health-seeking behavior their health protective behavior, their health adaptive behavior, it affects all of them. So the more educated you are, the likelihood, not necessarily all the time, the likelihood is there that you are more likely to have a better health seeking behavior. And then if you have a wife, evidence has shown that women who are educated tend to have children who are able to overcome childhood, those first five years better. Mm. Obvious, it's education. So the mother may tend to do more things that and be more aware mm. of some of these issues because she probably reads, she hears, listens to things on, on the uh, radio or watches television and gets information. But the one who is not literate may tend to make all the mistakes in the world. Hello there. With Frank Donga. Hello there. You are listening to Hello Doc with Frank Donga. So doctor, finally, I want you to now tell us what is what can be the major disadvantage of not taking this vaccination, especially for from babyhood, you know, that childhood period? Okay. Abi, 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 it's because yes, this, this is that it costs a lot of money. Maybe this thing is very expensive. Basically, most vaccine programs are free. Really. Uh, and that's also one of the reasons people are, some people think there's an agenda behind it, which is not true. The reason why this is because it's a developmental issue. Because it's free, they think it's free. Yeah, some people think, oh, somebody oh, must be... Maybe a wolf, they run yes, their leg. Yeah, so that kind anything of thing. So, free. Yeah, maybe. this is so... And it's not so. It. And it's not so. And it, because it's developmental. And the thing is this. It's, like I said, it saves lives. Like I said, if you even look at economies, what happens the more a child stays in school, the more likelihood the child will do better in terms of making money in life. Although it's not like people like uh, guess them that dropped out of university. <laughs> okay, those are outliers. But the point is this: the longer this, it gives uh, the evidence shows that for additional year the child spends in school, the child has twelve percent increased earning power. So if you follow this, so there's also that economic side of it. If the child is vaccinated, the child's likelihood to survive into adulthood is better. Then there's what what I call perspective realism. There's what we call demographic dividend. Demographic dividend looks at how a country's young population is able to add value to its economy. If your children are dying or they are sickly, by the time they are young adults, they cannot give you the best in your economy. They will become a problem for your economy because if some of them suffer chronic diseases that has afflicted them, so you need young people who enter the economy. And that's why China and most of the Asian tigers are doing well. They've done that demographic mm. transition and they are getting, reaping the dividends mm. from the economy. And a lot of those countries went through vaccination programs that worked for them. Bam. Doctor, you have said it all. You see now? You see, you see, that's the thing. So Nigeria now, people are, whether we do vaccination or we not do vaccination, the report card will come later. Mm. Whether Ali... Said. Or go Jumbo. to school or no, whether I leave or Jumbo. A card will come. Hey, 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 hey. Results will show. Uh, so naturally, so those things show. Hmm. It shows on a, con on, a con on a country's economy because it is later. That first five, uh, first 1,000 years of life, how the brain is, how the child 
was able to uh, survive the first five years without afflictions that affect whether the muscles or the brain gets into adulthood. Because you and I, we went through that process and survived it. That's why we can have this conversation. And that's why you need to listen to the rest of this That's why we can have this podcast. conversation. Without it, we can't have it. Thank you very much, Doctor. Dr. Francis, I told you, I, I know that you say, oh, go get the spaghetti. We say, you drop the gist, even the gist. I didn't expect it. It scattered me. So now you have heard, though, that's the gist. We have not stopped. Though. We are only just starting. Well, there's still more coming after this one. Like I told you, near campaign are the ones behind this. You can follow us on all our social media handles at near campaign. That is at N I Y E L campaign. Near campaign. And if you want to talk about what's in your mind, though, vaccination is confusing you, you don't know where they are collecting it, you need any information, more clarification on this issue of vaccination, just tweet what is in your mind now on Twitter, tweet it or post it on Instagram. But don't forget to use the hashtag change creators. Change creators hashtag so that we can follow up on you and do what and help you to get your desired goal and destination. Thank you very much for watching and listening on this podcast. We're not done yet. You need to watch other episodes where we'll be digging deeper and going deeper in this immunization issue. If Ali go to school now, Ali will get benefit. So that even John Boo that is going to school will come back with good results. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. It's your host, Frank Donga, on Hello Doc with Frank Donga. We'll be back again on the same podcast. Join us next.